Welcome to part two of the episode on the Akashic Records. If you haven't watched the first part, please go back and watch it. I give all the background information on everything related to the subject in detail. In part two of the episode, I'm going to tell you how to access the field we call the Akashic Records yourself. I'm going to give you the exact step-by-step -step process. <music> for accessing the Akashic Records is possibly even more critical than the skill. If your motivation is mere curiosity, if your intentions are not pure, or if the information you're looking for might be used for something other than the highest good of yourself, your path, or that of others connected to you, if you hold any type of egoic intention, not to mention a malicious one, then you will be rejected and the information you get will be tragically inaccurate. Another thing you need to understand is that in essence, we are receiving information from the Akashic quantum field all the time. This comes in the form of intuitive hits, inspiration, a more broadened objective perspective of things or a situation that may suddenly come upon us, an expansion in mental clarity and capacity to perceive things as they are, not polluted or diluted by your subjective filter or your possible resistance to certain information. Rule number two is you cannot read anybody else's records without their express permission. Again, the information will come all jumbled up and you won't be able to do anything with it. If the records choose to give you information about someone else as relates to you, that's different. You're the main character in the scenario and not the other person. So if you get these two house rules down, then there are literally thousands of methods and processes that you can use. The most important prerequisite, I would say, is the ability to get into a meditative state or what we call a theta brainwave state. So step number one is to get into a meditative state. You can use any type of meditation that works for you to achieve that. Linda Howe, who I mentioned in the first episode, who wrote the book on <clears throat> accessing the Akashic Records, she's considered basically an expert in this field, has a specific meditation. She calls it the pillar of life meditation. But honestly, you can do your own thing. I never get caught up in prescriptions or the right way to do things when it comes to spiritual endeavors. It's not a precise science like mass. When you get in a meditative state that opens you up, to any information that needs to flow through. Because when we're in theta, we're receptive and open. If you hold any type of negativity to the process, or if your vibration doesn't match what you're seeking from this field, you won't be able to get too far with it. You can only perceive something which holds a similar vibration to your own. So keep this in mind. Step two is the other prerequisite. When you do sit down, simply acknowledge to yourself the willingness to reveal and accept whatever is reported about yourself. This is very important actually, because you might, for example, receive disturbing information, such as disturbing images about the way you died or something similar in a previous life. By silently acknowledging that you are open and willing to receive, this opens the door of your consciousness just a little bit more. So after being consciously willing to learn and receive and find out, step number three is voicing your intention. This is what will actually start the communication process. Why you're accessing the records? What advice do you need? What would you like to find out? By voicing this, this will open up a channel 
that will allow this particular information to flow to you. It is better to not start questions from a limited perspective, for example, in terms of time. Don't ask, for instance, when will I meet the love of my life? <laughs> when questions are not very good, simply because time doesn't exist in this field, they will not get a good response. So you might want to keep that in mind, or if you do ask it, the information you receive may not be in the format you will think, and it will be up to you to decode it. Step number four, you just ask permission to access. If you prefer, Linda Howe has what she calls the pathway prayer, which she says is a prayer given to her by the light beings protecting the Akashic records. And supposedly the words in the prayer carry a vibration that links the individual's consciousness with the Akashic field. I personally use this prayer because it was the first way to access the records that I was exposed to. So you can find this online if you're interested. It's called the pathway prayer. Just Google it and it'll pop up for you. So theoretically, once you've done your small ritual, right? You're in the records. Here is when things will differ from person to person. Remember from the first episode of the Akashic Records, I described how Edgar Cayce went from one level to the next level until he reached the great hall of records, as he called it. He imagined it like a library. Because I'm a very visual person, I will always imagine myself in a vast library with books from floor to ceiling all the way up. And this library goes on and on and never ends. What you need to remember is that you are not actually going anywhere. Even if you're doing it through astral travel, this is just a process that will help your mind tune into the frequency of this quantum field, the Akasha, and process it in a way it can handle and understand. So if you're doing it visually like I am, at this point you might sense a presence in this library, which can be anything that feels more familiar to you really. It's like a personalized thing. It can be a spirit guides or it can actually be the light beings that are contained in this field. So Linda Howe calls these beings masters, teachers, and loved ones. So the masters hold great knowledge and have always been guiding humanity. They have never actually incarnated, but they remain in this realm to be called on for assistance. Teachers have actually experienced human life, right? But they are evolved souls that have achieved enlightenment and they have completed their physical mission in the world. So their purpose is now to provide this type of guidance for people. And the loved ones are people that actually knew you in your current life but have passed on and uh, they are now ready basically to offer their guidance to you. Think of the master teachers and loved ones as the interface between the Akashic and the earthly realms. The Akashic records field is governed and protected by the lords of the records who make sure that the records are handled with safety. They are responsible basically for granting access to the records and the type of information that's going to be revealed to each individual person. So for me, what happens is I actually see or visualize, if you will, five of these beings standing in front of me and handing me this book or that book so I can retrieve the information I need. And they also directly speak to me sometimes. This comes after I do my meditation and after I uh, set my intention and I ask what I want to be revealed to me. I'm fully aware that this has gone full on into woo-woo land. <laughs> These concepts might feel uncomfortable for you as they did for me, to be honest, for a long time before I became more familiar with them. I've always been and I still am, in many ways, a doubter. I don't like the word skeptic because the word for me, it presupposes a certain laziness in interacting with the notion that might not be in my direct comfort zone. I feel that skeptics are ready to call bullshit on just anything without trying to go deeper maybe and find out where the notion is coming from or if it has any validity. I doubt, right? 
but I am always willing to entertain the possibility of something being different than the way I expect it to be or the way I have been conditioned to perceive it, right? That's a very limiting thing if you think of it. So I'm just cautious with the information that comes my way and I will run it through a sieve of my individual perception. I will see how it feels in my body, if any resistance is coming up when I try to process it. And then what I will do is I will cross check it against more objective standards maybe, and then also possibly research it if that's feasible, because with some of these issues, it's not. <laughs> I don't just dismiss it right off the bat, but I will dismiss quite a bit. So back to the Akashic records, just like, all intuitive messages, the way you receive the information depends on which of your clairs is most developed. Clairs are natural abilities, which we all have, right? Which help us receive guidance or communication with fields that are not directly perceivable through our five senses. We all have them. Some people have them more developed, but every single human being carries these abilities to one degree or another. If, for example, your clear audience is sharper, you might hear something, a message in your own voice or some type of music maybe. If your clairvoyance is sharper, you may see images or a scene or people or an event happening or you might find yourself in a circumstance or something like that. This may not come at once, and if you're not trusting in the process, it may not come at all. It is not uncommon for people to get nothing on the first try. So don't be discouraged. Sometimes you will not be a vibrational match to the information that you're seeking because you will hold resistance. Doubt is a form of resistance. Fear is a form of resistance. Frustration is resistance. Desperation is resistance. Impatience is resistance. Train your trust muscle. That's of the utmost importance. That's why I said the meditative state is very important. Your brain is the least resistant when it's in theta. So if you do receive something, you can ask some additional clarifying questions if you need to. Remember that you will receive the exact information that's going to be relevant and helpful for you now in the way you're supposed to hear it. If you ask me, some of it might even be metaphorical. You might be accessing this information that needs to come through to you and the way to encode it, right, a certain way is irrelevant. As long as the most accurate and impactful message is delivered to you. So how will you know that you have indeed received accurate information if you have accessed the field? It will resonate and make sense to you. It will feel right to you. And honestly, that's our main and possibly only goal in this endeavor. You will be able to recognize false experiences if you experience any fear, for example, or any negativity, or if there's a strident voice that a certain tone, for instance, like a directive, you must do this or you must do that. That's not really compatible with this field. So anything that sounds or feels like this is just bullshit. I would just discard it. Whatever disempowers your individual choice or your sovereignty, whatever feels prescriptive in any way, honestly, just throw it in the garbage. There is no what you might call fate or destiny in the records. As life is the result of multiple, constantly shifting possibilities, interactions, synergies that are coming up all the time, interacting with each other, changing up timelines and all that stuff. Infinite potentials are present all at the same time at any given moment. And it is honestly up to us to shift to a timeline that we desire. 
Also, what will happen? Something may alert you to the fact that you're not in your usual state of consciousness and something is about to come through. For me, I feel that my breathing changes slightly. It becomes slightly more, more rapid and then I have a few moments of static, right? When seemingly nothing is happening. And then I will either get images or a story will play out in my head or I will get a verbal message which I have to write down immediately after I have this session because for some reason I forget it like really quickly, like 10 minutes after it will be gone. If I don't write it down, it's gone. So in closing, what I would urge you to do if you're interested in accessing this wonderful Akashic field that you can interact with is to go out and do your own research and find what technique works for you personally. You can of course use the steps I have described as a starting point. It's a good starting point, pretty solid I would say. Not to toot my own horn, but a little bit. <laughs> but as I said, and as I always say, the spiritual experience in general is a highly personal and also personalized affair. There are literally thousands of ways to access the Akashic field and limiting your own experience is like looking at this all encompassing, all containing, ever expansive field through a small peephole. So I encourage you to also experiment. The Sakashic field and the energies contained therein are really willing to play with you if you're up to playing with them. I'm sending you love. May you be happy, peaceful, 